The following is a special presentation of Ashland University's College of Arts and Sciences. Spotlight, a show where we spotlight the different staff, faculty, and departments in the College of Arts and Sciences. I'm your host, Rebecca Ribley. With 17 departments across campus, Ashland's College of Arts and Sciences encompasses a wide range of programs with everything from art to social work, history to politics, English to journalism and digital media, just to name a few. Today in the spotlight, we have Matt Tellis, Associate Professor of Journalism in JDM. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thanks for having me. All right, so first I want to kind of talk about you. I know that you were a journalist before you started teaching here. Um, so tell me a little bit about what that was like, what you got to experience in the field. Yeah, um, before I came to Ashland in 2008, I worked as a newspaper reporter for about 10 years. Uh, seven of those as an actual daily newspaper reporter. Uh, and then the other three as a freelancer while I was in grad school. Um, I started out, uh, I graduated from Ashland University in 1998 with a degree in journalism and then went to the Daily Record in Worcester, which is just a small daily newspaper. Um, I ultimately uh, ended up at the Columbus Dispatch, uh, which is a 300,000 circulation newspaper where I covered, uh, when I left, I was covering the Columbus Zoo, COSI, and the State Fair. So my days would involve going out to the zoo and hanging out with the gorillas, uh, writing about stuff happening there, writing about stuff happening at COSI, uh, and it was, it was great. So, um, uh, so 10 years of writing stories about all kinds of things, and, and then I ended up at Ashland. What was your favorite part of the job? I mean, I know you said you got to go to the zoo and do a lot of fun things, but what really would you say is your favorite? Well, the best thing about being a newspaper reporter uh, and a daily newspaper reporter is that no day, no day is ever the same as the day before. So every single day is something different. And you go, you go to work every day having no idea what, you, what could happen, theoretically. Um, some days you, it ends up happening, what you expect to happen, but other days you find yourself um, running out to cover a fire that you don't expect, that obviously you, you don't know is going to happen, or, or you find yourself tracking down a really interesting feature story or something like that. Um, and, and you meet all kinds of crazy and, and, and remarkable people too along the way. Now when you were in high school and you had to decide what you wanted to do when you grew up, did you see yourself doing this? Have you always known you wanted to be a journalist? No, when I was in high school, I was going to be um, a, a sports broadcaster, actually. Um, and I came to Ashland at the time as a radio TV major. Um, and about two weeks in, I was like, no, it's not going to work for me. Uh, maybe I'll just write about sports. Uh, and that was actually, I never intended to do news or features or anything. I, I was a sports guy all the way through. I wrote sports for the Collegian at Ashland University for my first two years and then it became the managing editor of the, of the Collegian my junior year but still wrote about sports um, but then I did an internship at the Daily Record in Worcester and I did news and I kind of fell in love with doing news and features and that type of stuff um, so that's when I kind of started focusing on um, you know hard news and, 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 then, and then the features that kind of branch off of news so you started teaching back here at Ashland in 2006, am I right? 2008. 2008, okay. Um, what brought you back here? Why did you want to come back to Ashland? Uh, when, I was, uh, when I was working at the Daily Record um, uh, in 2002, so I had been out of college for about four years, I kind of got tired of working in newspapers. Uh, and so I went to grad school and I got a, a Master in Fine Arts and Creative Writing. Um, which is a terminal degree, so it's a degree that you can teach with. You can get a tenure track job teaching, um, usually creative writing. Um, after getting that degree, I didn't find any teaching jobs, so I went back to newspaper work, which was great after having a creative writing degree. It kind of opened up a whole new type of reporting and that type of stuff. Um, but then, um, after I was at the dispatch for a couple years, uh, you know, I was happy at the dispatch, but then I got a call from my old advisor on the Collegian, Joe Mackle, and he said, hey, we have a job opening at Ashland and it's tenure track. Um, and 
your your MFA qualifies you for the job, you know, do you want to apply? Um, and at that point in time, it had been about 10 years of being a reporter, a daily newspaper reporter. Um, and that when you're a newspaper reporter, as fun as it is, it can also be tough, especially when you have a young family, because you will find yourself working 16 hour days. Um, you'll find yourself going in at 8 a.m. and not coming home until midnight. Um, or you'll find yourself traveling. Um, I traveled several times for stories um, at the dispatch. Um, and so you're gone for maybe a week at a time uh, reporting on stuff. And so the idea of going and teaching, and especially here at Ashland, um, really intrigued me. And so I went ahead and applied and ended up getting the job. Now, I know um, I've heard this from all of my professors and everything, but JDM here at Ashland is different than all the other schools in Ohio. Can you talk a little bit about what we have that other schools don't? Yeah, I think we have a lot of stuff that other schools don't. Uh, I think the main, the biggest thing is um, we have this idea of convergence and our, our journalism degree is based on teaching our students to report regardless of um, media platform. So we teach you how to report for print, for TV, for radio, for web. We teach you how to report and then it's up to you to decide, well, how does that information get disseminated? Uh, and a lot of journalism schools are still kind of breaking those areas up in terms of newspapers on one end, TVs on another end, and radio somewhere in the middle, and then webs off on its own somewhere. Um, we kind of tore down those those walls uh, between the four uh, four media medias. Um, so that's one air, one way one thing that I think sets us apart. Uh, we've kind of built this convergence into the curriculum. Um, and the other thing that sets us apart, and I think this is really important, is we expect our students to start producing for our student-run media the day they get on campus, when they're freshmen. Um, we don't let anybody hide behind the fact that they haven't had a certain class yet or that they haven't um, done this or that yet. Um, we, when you get to campus, we want you working now. Um, and that kind of stems from a belief that um, that you learn best by doing. And you'll make mistakes, but that's okay because you're making mistakes now in college and not out on the, on the, on the job when a mistake could cost you your job. Um, and the more you do it, the better you're gonna get too. Uh, and that we firmly believe that. And luckily, and thirdly, we're small enough to where that, uh, that, can, that can be the case. We don't have 500 seniors all claiming the top spots of every production or every newspaper spot. Um, we, you know, we're small enough to where freshmen can come in and write a story that's on the front page of the Collegian, or freshmen can come in and anchor a show on TV 20, uh, or do something in the radio station. Um, and I think that sets us apart too. Okay. After this short break, we'll be back with more on Ashland University's Journalism and Digital Media Department. And we will also be talking about Gangri, the podcast, right after this. Above everything else, above all of the experience that we get, you develop a second family um, through the journalism department. We're not just students, we're not it's just, it's not a divided student-faculty relationship. You really get to know everybody and you can call the journalism department your home. And when you can call a department your home and you're comfortable around all of those people, you're able to develop skills that you might be afraid to kind of go for otherwise, but we're able to um, push each other and give each other that confidence and I think that above the experience that gives us that extra little push that um, other schools don't have. If you're just joining us, our guest on this edition of the CAS Spotlight is Matt Tullis, veteran journalist and advisor of the student-run newspaper The Collegian. So in this segment, I want to talk about something that is really unique. You just created Gangri the Podcast. Tell me about that. What's that about? Um, Gangry the podcast is uh, something new that actually started in December of 2012, actually, I think. Um, but what's really taken off in the last um, three or four months uh, since last fall. Um, the podcast uh, is it's a podcast that we produce uh, every other week uh, and is dedicated to discuss discussing um, literary journalism with the writers and reporters who actually write it. Um, so 
we've had reporters from Esquire, GQ, the New York Times Magazine, Rolling Stone, um, uh, Tampa Bay Times, a whole bunch of really great national publications come on the podcast and talk about specific stories that they've written, uh, how, they, how they reported the story, how they wrote the story, but also about reporting in general uh, and some of the things that they encounter along the way. Uh, and it's been it's been great. It's been so much fun. Um, yeah. So you said you started in December of 2012, and it just took off. You know, how many months ago? Six months ago? Yeah, just about. Um, what do you think pushed it over the edge? I think it was just the fact that we kept doing it. Um, I'll backtrack a little bit. We got started because uh, I was doing a, a piece for Creative Nonfiction Literary Magazine that uh, talked about journalism as a form of creative writing. Um, and specifically creative nonfiction. Uh, and I was interviewing uh, Chris Jones from Esquire, Thomas Lake from Sports Illustrated, and Ben Montgomery from the Tampa Bay Times. And we were doing this by email. And a student, Glenn Battishill, who was managing editor of the Collegian at the time, said that we should do a podcast, uh, something similar. And, and we joked about, about it, and then we ultimately did it. Um, we did them real sporadically that first semester. Um, so uh, I think we did like seven episodes in that the spring of 2013, um, you know, no timetable. We just did them when we did them. There was no kind of rhyme or reason to what we were doing or how we were doing it. Uh, and then took a break over the summer. And then when we came back in the fall, um, had a plan for exactly how we were going to do that. And the plan was every other week we're going to have one, um, and we'll promote it using social media, Twitter, Facebook, um, pretty much everything at our disposal. And I got lucky in that I had some really phenomenal um, guests who had written some amazing stories. Uh, the first one that we came back with was Luke Dittrich from Esquire, who had a story on the Joplin, Missouri tornado. Uh, that story won the National Magazine Award for feature writing, so we had him on, on talking about that story. Uh, we had uh, Wright Thompson from ESPN.com, who is probably the best literary sports writer on the planet right now. Um, that episode, just went crazy uh, with the people who were downloading it and listening to it um, as soon as it went up online. Uh, we had uh, another great writer, Jason Fagone, who just published a book back in September and uh, writes a lot of, about like uh, science and stuff. He writes for Wired Magazine and, and, and other stuff. Um, so we just had some really great, uh, really great guests that I think were big enough names to where it kind of got, gained some traction and, and kind of took off. So these are nationally known writers. How do you get into contact with them? How do you get them to come on to your show? Uh, it's really funny. Um, the, when we started, I was, start, I was going with people that I knew or that I knew uh, that we had mutual acquaintances. Um, so our first guest was actually Justin Heckert, uh, who had a story in the New York Times Magazine. And, um, and I knew Justin not personally, but I knew him from Twitter. Uh, we had interacted on Twitter a couple times, just over some really stupid stuff, actually. Um, but then I thought, you know, here's a guy with a national magazine piece. You know, we've chatted back and forth on Twitter a couple times. Why not ask him to be the first guest? Um, after that, it was mostly people who um, either I just reached out to on Twitter and said, hey, doing this podcast, do you want to come on? Or people that I know. Um, we recently had Michael Cruz on a couple months ago, and his episode has been downloaded or listened to more than every other episode we've done combined. Uh, he wrote a story on uh, a ship that sank during Hurricane Sandy. And I knew Michael uh, um, as a reporter. I knew him when he was, at, uh, he's still at the Tampa Bay Times. I knew him when I was at the Columbus Dispatch. We had met and had beers a couple of times whenever he was in Columbus. And so I knew Michael, and I knew he had this big story that had come out, so I just, you know, I emailed him and said, hey, come on the podcast. Um, so I'm lucky enough to know a lot of these people just from the industry. Uh, and everybody's been more than willing. Nobody, I don't think anybody said, no, I don't want to do it yet, um, which is really great. And for me, I like get to talk to the journalists that I like idolize. And that, that's just amazing. My follow-up question is, do you get nervous? I mean, these are big names. <laughs> um, no, not really. Um, I, I don't know. I mean, I've interviewed a lot of even bigger names than, than, than this uh, as a reporter. You kind of get over that pretty quickly, um, getting over the nerves. I think I was more nervous, especially when I started, about the fact that it was 
I was doing interviews for broadcast, and I'd never done that before. I, I'm a print guy, right? I've never had to, I've always recorded my interviews, but never so anybody could ever hear them. <laughs> and asking questions for a broadcast is way different than if you're asking questions for a print story. Like, it's not even close. Um, and so I was more nervous about that than just talking to these, these really big names. How did you learn how to put a podcast together? Uh, this was, uh, it was, it took a while, but um, <laughs> Steve Cease, who is a WRDL uh, advisor for our student run uh, radio station, um, for that first, first semester, uh, I would, he showed me how to set it up to record, and I would record the interview, and then I'd be like, okay, Steve, edit this interview for me and then give it to me and I'll put it online. Um, I did a lot of research to figure out how to publish podcasts online, but, but Steve showed me some places to go to. Um, but then over the summer, I told Steve I wanted to learn how to do it all by myself. Um, so I wouldn't need to be taking up his time and I could just do them. Uh, and so, I don't know, it took a couple episodes. Um, the Luke Dittrich episode and, and the Jason Fagone episode, which I think were episodes nine and 10 or eight and nine, something like that and kind of Steve just made me do it. So he made me edit, do the editing, uh, do all that type of stuff myself. And literally in a couple episodes, I had it, uh, had it down. I'm, not, I'm still not as good as Steve, but I mean, I'm getting there, so. Coming up next, we'll talk more about journalism professor Matt Tellis's podcast project right after this. more CAS Spotlight. We're joined by Matt Tullis, veteran journalist and host of Gangry the Podcast. Matt, thanks again for being with us. So we just spoke about in depth about your podcast. Can you tell us about the most recent podcast that you've completed? Yeah, actually, um, I just finished and this should be live soon. Um, it's probably live right now by the time people are watching. Um, uh, a podcast featuring Will S. Uh, Hilton who is a writer for the New York Times Magazine. Um, but back in November, he released a book called Vanished. Uh, it's a book about the 60 year search for a missing bomber um, from World War II that crashed over the South Pacific. Uh, and, and Will actually spent time on the boat that was searching for the bomber. Uh, and he also wrote in depth about the, um, the men who were on the bomber who, who died in the crash. Um, and it's a really fascinating book, a great piece of uh, book-length nonfiction, uh, really, really hardcore journalism too, um, that's told in a really beautiful way. And Will had some great stuff um, talking about just how it is you go about reporting something of book length. Uh, and that's the first time we focused on a book uh, with a podcast. We've done magazines, magazine stories, we've done newspaper stories, we've never done a, a, a podcast focused on a book. Uh, so it was really, really interesting to see how you have to change your reporting methods when you're doing something much larger than when you're doing something shorter. Now, there's something that students can learn by talking to any journalist, but is there any way that you incorporate this podcast into the classroom at all? Yeah, occasionally we'll listen to, uh, to some of the podcasts. I know in, um, in feature writing last semester, we listened to the Wright Thompson podcast um, because he's really great at writing profiles. and. Um, and he, when I talked with Wright, he had written a profile about Michael Jordan, uh, just as Jordan turned 50 years old. And nobody had ever gotten that close to Jordan before. And it's a, an unbelievable story. Uh, and I figured, you know, if we're talking about profile writing and feature writing, why not have the class listen to Wright Thompson um, talk about how he writes profiles? Uh, and that was, that was really great. Um, in the future, I teach narrative journalism. I'll be teaching it in the fall and we'll use these podcast episodes a lot because that's what we're really focused, focused on is narrative or literary journalism. And there's so many lessons that you can get from these people who do this on a daily basis uh, that I think it'll be real beneficial to, to students in the class. Just because I'm curious, um, is there any one podcast that you 
think is your favorite that you're partial to? Is there one that you thought was the best? Can you pick? Oh my gosh, that's really hard. Um, <laughs> I was really, uh, I don't know, sorry. Wright Thompson was really exciting just because um, he is just in this echelon of reporters that is so far, be doing so far, writing so much more than I could ever even imagine doing myself. Um, so that's a really fun one. Um, the Michael Cruz one is great, again, because you know I know him, the story's great, um, and he was a lot of fun to talk with. He's a phenomenal speaker. He's done TED Talks about storytelling and that type of thing. Um, I just thought of my favorite one, and this is completely <laughs> self-serving, and it's a little bit embarrassing, but my favorite one was Luke Dittrick from Esquire. That was the first one we did coming back from the fall, and the reason it was my favorite one is because we had, I had finished asking him questions about his stories, and then he said, can you tell me about this horseshoe story you wrote? <laughs> and I was like, I was like in awe that somebody who had won a national magazine award had like read some of my stuff. And so I was, I was just, yeah, that was, that was like my dream that at some point in time, a <laughs> national magazine writer would ask me about my stuff and then it actually happened. So, um, yeah, so completely self-serving and in vain, but I mean. Hey, okay, that's all right. So. <laughs> so what do you think the future is for Gangry the podcast? Um, I think we're going to keep, uh, keep doing them every other week, um, trying to put out two a month. Um, what, one thing I've thought a lot about, and I don't know what changes will happen. I, I like to change. I don't like to keep anything the same for a long period of time. I think when you do that, it becomes stale and, and, and it just sounds the same no matter who you're talking to. So I'm always thinking about how we might change things up. Uh, one thing I would like to do is um, create some themed uh, shows. So maybe we're not just talking to one reporter, but we talk to several reporters about like one certain thing, like how do you come up with story ideas, or um, how do you um, how do you uh, do observation in the field, um, or how do you write? What is your writing process like? Um, I, I would like to ultimately at one point in time get into that type of theme type show, um, and I'd like to find a way to get into like storytelling too. Like instead of it having be an interview, how do we tell a story, getting the same information though into a story. Uh, and I'm really influenced a lot by, by shows like Radio Lab, uh, which is on NPR, um, This American Life, um, things like that that are nonfiction radio, um, audio stories, and but all nonfiction. Uh, so I'm always listening to those things and trying to figure out ways that we can kind of um, not push the envelope, but change and, and make the storytelling a little bit more fresh and less um, uh, repetitive. That sounds good. Now, I know after everyone has heard this interview, they're all going to want to go and listen to Gangry the podcast. So how can they do that? Uh, there are a couple of ways, actually. Um, you can go to uh, gangrythepodcast.com, uh, which is uh, G-A-N-G-R-E-Y, thepodcast.com. Um, you can also follow us on Twitter. Uh, we have a pretty robust Twitter account. It's at Gangry Podcast. Uh, and we just created a Facebook page too because well, I don't want to leave any social Why medias not? out. Um, and uh, I, the podcast is hosted uh, on, a, on a site called Podomatic. It's uh, uh, a great pod, uh, podcast hosting site. So you could even go to Podomatic and search Gangry, uh, the podcast, and you could listen to it there. You can listen to it on iTunes. You can download it for free on iTunes. Just search Gangry. Um, Stitcher Radio is an app for smartphones. You can find it there. You can find it in about a thousand different places. Um, All right, thank you so much for being with us today. We really appreciate it. We'll be back with another look inside Ashland University's College of Arts and Sciences on the next edition of the CAS Spotlight. For all of us in our Center for the Arts studios, I'm your host, Rebecca Rively. So long, everyone.